Hello my crafty loving friends, welcome to Purpose My Way, I'm Shelly. I have a really fun video for you today. Uh, these are Love Solar Fl Sola Flowers, uh, S-O-L-A, and they are so much fun. These are little wood flowers and they're beautiful just on their own. But I'm going to show you how to color them today and make a little rustic bouquet out of them or a little centerpiece just to show you what they would look like. I'm going to be using these more in a future video, but I wanted to show you today how I'm going to dye them. They have so many different ones. There's roses, dahlias, daisies, oh my gosh, big, small, little, all different sizes. Now I contacted them on my own and I was looking for some pine cones. I wanted certain kind of pine cones and I saw that they had them so I contacted them and said would you please send me some and uh, if you'd like to collaborate and they were more than willing to do that. Dyeing these were really simple and it didn't take a lot to do that. I have this little bottle of glycerin that I'm going to get with uh, a couple of bowls that are that I can put paint in and not worry about uh, uh, hurting them at all or staining them. So I got a three pack from the Dollar Tree. Had a little green lids on them if I want to put lids on them to keep them from spilling and use them again. And I'm just taking a cap full of this glycerin and putting it in some water that uh, I have in the bowls. Now you want enough water in there so that when you dip your flowers they will uh, fully immerse or you can move them around so they will get all wet. And I took a spoonful, probably a tablespoonful of my burgundy uh, paint and mixed that in and then I took some of my antique wax that was already watered down so I put a little bit extra in that one and uh, probably two tablespoons in that one just because it was already watered down and I put it in the water and just mixed it in. Now as you can see I also bought some of the uh, rubber gloves to put on so that my hands wouldn't get all messy and they definitely helped with that. Now the reason why you use the glycerin in the water is to keep the flowers uh, nice and soft. So if you were to just use the water and paint, which you could do, uh, it doesn't uh, stay soft. The petals and the flowers get very hard and they can crack really easily. I found that the glycerin helped keep them soft so that you could uh, move them around once you got them wet and then once they dried they would stay that way. They would stay nice and soft so that you could move them around and not fear cracking the leaves off or the petals off. So I just dipped them once just to see what I would get. Now you always could add more paint to get a deeper color uh, or less paint to get an even lighter color. It all depends on how much paint, how dark you want to go. I also dipped it more than once and so that would also make it darker. I let it let them dry after the first dip, uh, first couple dips, and then they would dry uh, a little bit, and I would dip them again, and that would help stain them or kind of dye them a little bit more. Now these are those pine cones that I really really wanted. They were they're just so pretty. I love them, and I used those in the stain that I had, or the antique wax, and I use it as a stain, but. I just dip those in and just fluff out what I want. Once they're wet, they'll fluff right out. But you're just going to make sure you dip them again because once you fluff them out, it will open up more of the spots that you didn't get stain on. So when you dip them, it will stain some more of, you know, whatever you fluff out on those flowers. So in order to dry these flowers and that the airflow would get around, I used my, my cooling rack and some parchment paper underneath. You could use whatever you want, a paper towel or a towel or plastic, just something that would catch the dripping paint because it will drip. And it just allows the air to flow to get all around the flower and dry really nicely. If you have any broken petals on your flowers, you want to make sure that you remove those and then dip them again so that they will get the stain on them really well. 
Same as if you have uh, a smushed flour, you definitely want to fluff it up and then dip it again. Um, it works really well that way. They don't fluff out when they're dry very well. So I really love how the variegated leaves got some extra, uh, just some extra paint on them on certain spots. So I thought that I would take a paintbrush and some more concentrated paint and go around the edges and darken them up and because I loved that look so much. And this came out really, really nice. I love how this came out. First I tried with the rag and I thought that I would wipe it off with just a, just a paper towel. Uh, and then I decided I would dip them again and see what would come up, what I would come up with. And of course it got a little bit darker, which I loved. And then uh, it also kind of bled the darker paint that I had on there a little bit. See how pretty that is. I just love it. Um, I love the detail that you can add to these. Now, of course, you could go in with a different color. If you didn't want to do burgundy, you could go in with... Uh, a different color to to make even even more variegated leaves but uh, I just wanted to stick with the burgundy color or it ends up being more of a dusty rose really when it's all done but I really love the look of this it's almost like uh, when I put these together like a shabby chic looking um, bouquet of flowers really and see that one I dipped as well. See how pretty that is with those leaves. Just a little bit darker on the ends. Just so pretty. Now I did the same with the stain. I uh, went in and just a little bit more concentrated and just brushed that on onto the edges. And those have longer, I guess, petals, you want to call it, on the sides of those pine cones. So see the difference there. The one on the right is the one without uh, the double dipping. There we go, we got them mostly all done. Some of them I didn't dip twice, some of them I didn't do the, the tips. See how that one's drying really nicely. Now I was gonna let these dry for a day. It ended up being two days, which is actually what they needed. They were pretty wet. So they dried for a couple days and I am gonna go back in and take my little brown uh, mason jar that I love to use with little bouquets and some greenery that I had. And I'm just going to take some skewers. I uh, probably got these skewers at Walmart. Maybe Dollar Tree has them. I don't know. But they have a pointy end on them and they go right in these flowers so well. And with that glycerin in the water, it made these so uh, gentle not hard so that you could put the skewer right in there and not worry about breaking the petals. So I just stick that in there and I just trimmed them off where I wanted them. And then I just made a cute little bouquet with them. I really love these colors together. I, again, feel like it's a kind of a shabby chic color. Um, the colors together, I just think they look beautiful. And they're kind of Christmassy, but not real Christmassy. They're definitely not your traditional Christmas colors, but not everyone decorates with red and green for Christmas. This is more of a rustic, shabby chic look, I think. So I hope you like it. Let me know down in the comments what do you think do you think these are Christmassy or would you stick with the traditional red and green I will leave links down in the description for you and don't forget if you haven't already please subscribe like this video and have a great day